Ooh, what's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG WTF, LOL, FTWBRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2001. More importantly, we are in booking the Invasion Angle. And uh, we're going to be running Sunday Night Heat here. The Heat before Survivor Series. So as per usual and as promised, despite, you know, us no longer being on a set schedule anymore, Survivor Series will be uploaded to alongside with Heat today. So don't you worry about that. Both of them will be uploaded today. We will get to see War Games whenever I actually get to uploading this. Either way, though, nerds and geeks, nothing really to talk about right now. Let's just jump right into this. And as you guys know, of course, all Sunday Night Heats tie in to Survivor Series. So we'll, we'll see a little bit of a, a tie-in here. As Sunday Night Heat opens up with the right to censor, of course, Stephen Richards, the good father, and Ivory. Some of you may be no noticing that the good, or excuse me, not the good father, Val Venus is missing. And, well, that's just because Val Venus is injured now. He got injured in the match last week between Billy Kidman and Spike Dudley. I forget what exactly happened. Either that or I suspended him for something, but I'm pretty sure he was, like, injured or something like that. I think maybe he did get suspended now that I look back on it. I think it was him and someone else I ended up suspending. Either way, though, Heat opens up with the right to censor, or what's left of the right to censor, already in the ring. Richard already has the mic, and he takes it, and he says, Look at this mess. And, of course, when he says, look at this mess, he's talking about the set, the set design of the area, how Survivor Series is all about, you know, one side you got WCW, the other side is WWF superstars who get their, like, kind of like Invasion in real life when they had their separate little entrances. Either way, he's like, look at this mess. Look at what's hanging over me. Yep. That, that's a big steel cage. Probably the biggest I've ever seen in the WWF. He's talking about War Games' as cage, of course. All this for some stupid war? For the wrong war? Because people, I've been saying it for weeks. It doesn't matter if it's WCW or WWF. It doesn't matter who wins. Because there is still going to be a war going on in the wrestling industry. The war for PG. And while it may take a while, trust me when I say that the right to censor's main mission in life is to make wrestling a little more friendly for everyone else to watch. That's when he's interrupted by the music of Head Chop and out come Funaki and Al Snow, who actually had a loss to the right to censor a couple weeks back. Snow takes the mic and he says, Shut the hell up, Richards. You don't want to show everyone... You don't want to show that everyone can watch. You want to show with your stamp of approval that everyone can watch. You want a watered-down product of what we already got. Did I... I did? Wow. <laughs> and you know what, Stevie? A couple weeks... A couple weeks back... Val and the good father beat Head Chop over here. Well, I don't know what the hell I was trying to say there. And while I'll give it you credit when credit is due, they did beat us. But that won't happen again, especially now that Val is out and the GF is without a partner. Unless, of course, that's um, that's if you want to step in, Stevie. And then Richards, you know, being the cocky, arrogant, smug little guy he is, like, you know what, Al? It would be my pleasure. To help the good father take down you two stereotypes. And uh, kind of a generic angle to start it off, but that opens up our opening match of the night, or starts off our opening match of the night, between Head Chop and the Right Two Sensor, this time being represented by Stephen Richards and the good father. Of course, uh, Vince McMahon, us, working on being a heel with both Shane and Stephanie, his protégés, so there's that going for them, I guess. Solid 43 D to start the show. Apparently it was a poor way to start off, but that's okay. Al Snow looked good. Ivory's improving in acting. We get into our match, which gets a 55 C minus. He can't complain about that. And about that had subpar wrestling and little heat to it. Head chop going over Stephen Richards and the good father right to censor in 7 minutes, 44 seconds, when Al Snow defeats Richards with the snowplow. We also had Ivory, of course, trying to help the right to censor, but it didn't help out too much because, as we clearly see, head chop still went over. Good father with a 44. Impressive enough here. Stephen Richards with a 53. Didn't think he was actually better than a good father, but it looks like good father might be the weakest link of the right to center. Funaki with a 48, and Al Snow with the best rating in the match of a 61. As we move on to our next segment of the night, we get a B-plus rating here. Test has arrived. Now, obviously, you guys will see Test is not actually on the screen. I'll get to that in just a moment. Either way, Test has arrived in the arena. He gets out of his car, and he's all, you know, smiling. He's happy to be here. And that's when he is jumped from behind by Scott and Rick Steiner once again. 
and the Steiner brothers are beating Tess down. They're beating him down, tossing him around, just giving him a good old Steiner beat down. And then finally, they just take his leg, put it in between the car door, and just start slamming the car door on what I'm going to say is his, air quotations, injured leg. Start slamming the door, and that's when Albert and Trish, of course, Albert and Trish were going to meet Test when he got here, start, you know, come racing towards to save him. Steiner's run away, and Albert's just checking on his fallen partner, and, uh, yeah, things are looking good for Test. So you guys may know, or may notice, as I said prior, Test isn't in on this angle. He's off screen, despite, you know, him supposed to be on screen. Well, that's because, um, Test isn't actually here tonight. <laughs> As you guys may know, he was uh, suspended, even though I should have sent him to rehab, but I stupidly clicked suspend on both him and Mike Austin. But either way, Test is not actually here on Sunday Night Heat, so I wasn't able to use him in the angle. So that's why he's off screen, but I still needed to kind of do it for storyline purposes. So let's just kind of pretend he was here. Why not? Gained heat for the War Games storyline, which you won't hear me complaining about. As we lead into a 55C-, minus, Mean Gene Oakland is backstage with the Cruiserweight champion Billy Kidman and, of course, Tori Wilson. And he says, All right, fans, joining me at this time is the WCW Cruiserweight champion, Billy Kidman. Billy, tonight you defend that title against Spike Dudley, a very different Spike Dudley from what we've seen as of late. And then Kidman goes, Yeah, and you know, I've said in the past, and I, and I do mean it, I feel bad for Spike. What happened between him, Molly, and Gregory, you know, that's between him, them. It doesn't give Spike the right to go around and accuse my long-time girlfriend here of being a gold digger. Spike needs to stop worrying about Tori and looking out for the, for the boys and start looking out for himself. Because if he doesn't, he'll find himself laying on the mat after a three count when I hit him with the shooting star press. And not only walk out with the babe, but still the WCW Cruiserweight Champion. And then he walks off, ending that little segment there as, uh, indeed, nerds and geeks, you guys have said it. I have gone ahead and done it. Despite me having a little bit of second thoughts and maybe putting Billy and Spike on the main show, we are going to keep them as the main event on Heat tonight. So Billy Kidman kind of, you know, touching on Spike's problems. As we've seen in the past, Spike, ever since the, uh, Molly Holly left him for Gregory Helms, he's kind of been a little bit of an emotional wreck, kind of an emo in a way. And he's been telling Billy, you know what, you need to get rid of Tori. She's just, she's just waiting for you to pretty much lose that title and she'll go to the next best thing. But Billy even pointed it out himself here. Tori and Billy have been dating for a long time. It's not like, you know, Tori wasn't with Billy when he wasn't a champion. So it's getting interesting is what I was, I'm just saying. As we go into our next match of the night with a solid D rating here with a 46. And about that apparently had terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat. Big Boss Man and Perry Saturn, you know, the team with great chemistry. Go over Bobby Roode and Chris Sabin when the Big Boss Man defeats Chris Sabin with the Bubba Slam. Okay. Why are you using Bubba Ray Dudley's move, Big Boss Man? Either way, you guys will see their, their opponents were Bobby Roode and Chris Sabin, some fan favorites. Of course, also some Ontario local Ontario talents here, so I figured why not? They cool the crowd, but that's fine. Perry Saturn did look good out there. He had a 61. Boss Man just a 60, one point below Perry. Uh, Saban with a 15, and Bobby Roo with a 19. Saban, improving in technical and performance, he made the best of his match here tonight. As we then move... I didn't do it this week in the WWF segment. If I did, it's most likely the main event, or the, you know, the semi-main thing, whatever. Either way, I probably messed up, but it's just heat, so I don't care enough. 53C- minus as we go into our Cruiserweight Championship match, and about that had subpar wrestling and little heat to it, Billy Kidman goes over Spike Dudley in 10 minutes, 5 seconds, with the Shooting Star Press, after Tori Wilson interfered. Huh. So imagine at one point, this is what I would say, Spike was about to go for the Dudley Dog, maybe about to beat Kidman, Tori stands up on the ropes, and that causes Spike to stop, because, well, I mean, even though Spike, he, he's trying to get Billy to leave Tori, because in his mind, Tori's a gold digger, he's not going to hurt a woman. But that comes back and bites him because he stops, which allows Billy Kidman to, like, toss him chest first into the, the turnbuckle. Spike takes a bump. Billy goes for the shooting star press. One, two, three. Retains the Cruiserweight Championship. Spike with a 46. Billy with a 64. Literally the exact opposite, pretty much. Or when I say that, I mean, you know, backwards numbers. 64, 46. You guys get where I'm going with this. Let's see what I messed up on. Okay, 
Not too bad. So this was supposed to be before the Cruiserweight title match. I stupidly didn't put it there. Just our this week in the WWF segment, hyping up, you know, the matches that we saw between Rock and Kurt Angle, battling Booker T and Diamond Dallas Page, and of course the Brothers of Destruction battling Scott and Rick. The good stuff, nerds and geeks. The good stuff. Handle changes. Oh, never mind. I know what it is. Uh, yes. And then the main event of the, or not the main event, but the ending segment of the night, Nerds and Geeks, we get a solid B rating here with an 81. Vince McMahon and the entire Team WF, or at least what's left of them, The Undertaker, Kane, Albert, and Rob Van Dam. They're all standing outside of, you know, the doctor's locker room. When finally the doctor comes out and he says, you know, while Tess may not be completely re-injured, he's definitely not going to be able to compete here tonight at Survivor Series. And that leaves Team WF without a complete team, now making it 4-5 to five, unless they can find someone beforehand. This is when Team WF just starts getting a little angry, and they start arguing slash questioning what they're going to do. And then Vince finally steps up and he says, Shut up! Now look here. Tess may be out, but we got a whole locker room of soldiers ready to defend Nick's company. So you three just let Taker and I handle this, while you guys focus on getting ready for war games. And uh, that pretty much ends off the segment. Apparently, Albert has a gimmick that is getting stale, which, good thing we found that out now before we got, went to the pay-per-view, so we can go ahead and do that. By the way, Taz was the other guy got, that got suspended. It was Val Venus and Taz, so Jim Cornette and Michael Cole are the only two on commentary right now. Got the crowd interested, even though it is the main event. RV was pretty poor, but Undertaker was good. And that ends off the show to get us a 69 C-plus for Sunday Night Heat, and it also allows us to probably go change Albert's, you know, gimmick that way doesn't do us in. We have a decision? I think I've hired everybody I wanted to keep you guys out of. So, that's most likely some fucking druggy. Lovely. Okay, so we got a couple of things here. Jim Ross, of course, the winning award. Kamikaze is rising. He only works in Japan, though, so I don't care. OVW is what we're going to be starting off with the developmental companies, and it looks like we're going to be ending with NWA. So, OVW got a solid... D rating with a 45 as we open up with, what is it, who, who's Payne? BJ Payne. BJ Payne and Flash Flanagan going over Damaja and Bull Buchanan by DQ with a 41. Mr. Black going over Maven to retain the OVW Hardcore title with a 23. Nick Dinsmore defeating Finley with a 57. And then Rob Conway retains his OVW Heavyweight title over Leviathan, a.k.a. Batista, with a 44 rating. We then go to HWA, which got a 48 D+. We open the night with Reno going over Logan Kane with a 28. Rory Fox then defeats Corporal Cajun by DQ, presumably for the Cruiserweight Championship. That got a 38. Mike Sanders going over D'Lo Brown with a 50. And then Shannon Moore retaining his HWA heavyweight title over Evan Courageous with a 50 rating as well. And then finally, NWA... Gets a 56 C- minus rating as we open up the night with Ken Anderson defeating Lazarus with a 42 rating. We then go to Chris Harris defeating J.C. Daz with a 31. Caprice Coleman retaining his NWA junior heavy, or Georgia Junior Heavyweight title over John Phoenix with a 44. We then have a backstage segment between Carlito Cool, a.k.a. you know Carlito, and Sean O'Hare. Got a 61 rating. Darren Young. I know it's not Darren Young. David Young. David Young. Someone named Cassidy that I wasn't paying attention to. This guy, right? Cassidy O'Reilly. So David Young, Cassidy O'Reilly, and Prince Justice going over Jason Cross, Onyx, and Air Paris with a 53 rating and six-man action. David Flair going over Rodog in his debut match with NWA with a 42 rating. And then we end off the night with a 69 as AJ Styles goes over Adam Jacobs to retain the NWA Wildside Heavyweight Championship. All right, what do we got here, guys? Uh, Ricky Banderas has officially joined OVW, which we knew about. Drug test stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did we catch? Oh, Rick Steiner. Oh, thanks, Rick. Thanks, buddy. Now, of course, you know, as we been, we mentioned it in the past, with steroid people just get the fine because we get too many steroids nowadays, but thanks a lot, Rick. Get, enjoy that fine. I don't give a damn if you're unhappy. I don't give a damn if Scott Steiner's unhappy. Actually, I kind of do. 
Does it does it show up? Thank God. Okay, as long as it doesn't show up, I don't care. Because uh, I need you guys at your best at the pay-per-view. So, pay-per-view is in three days. Let us move forward. Ah, draws. Poor draws. Nitro got a 44.18. Oh, shit. OVW with another show. And uh, I guess we did end up letting Rico Constantino go. Shame for him. My bad, man. I thought I re-signed you. I guess I missed it. My bad, brother. Um, Rico Constantino moves on. Shame, my bad, brother. And uh, apparently Shannon Moore is going to be feuding with D'Lo Brown. That's not a new feud, guys. That's happened. Terry Runnels joining UPW. I think she actually... I think we let her go, actually. Yeah, back in November. Like, get the hell out of here, Terry. We don't need you. So OVW with another show last night. OVW The Price, which got a 47 D rating here. We open on a night with women's action as Nikita retains her OVW Women's Championship against Taylor Matney with a 24. Mr. Black going over Payne to retain the OVW Hardcore Championship. That got a 27. We have a skit involving Gail Kim and Randy Orton. That's interesting. 53 rating there. Randy Orton then goes over Fit Finley. Good victory. They're, they're giving Randy a push, it looks like. That got a 60 rating, the best match of the night. And then Rob Conway going over Mark Henry to retain the OVW Heavyweight Championship with a 45. Not too shabby. What do we got here? BJ Whitmer has left IWA MAS or whatever. So does that mean he officially joined us? Yeah. He's officially under contract with us now. So BJ Whitmer and... Um, I forget his name in real life for some reason at the top of my moment, but uh, at the top of the moment, but pretty much Mil Muertes. So I already know there's a new champion in NWA, but apparently NWA had a um uh, pay per view also. Apparently, also Shocker and Scorpio Junior hate each other, and Monster Ripper hangs up her boots as we go into NWA High Stakes 2001 with a 57 C minus here. Scotty Wren going over James Storm with an E29 to open up the show. We then have a brawl, apparently, between Ernest the Cat Miller and Alex Wright, Das Wonder Kid, that gets a 56. Rick Michaels going over Colt Cabana to get a 47 rating here. Chris Harris defeating AWC, oh, American Wild Child, and JC Daz with a 36 D minus. Adam Jacobs pulling up a victory here as he goes over Caprice Coleman to uh, dethrone him as we have a new NWA Georgia Junior Heavyweight Champion, and his name is Adam Jacobs. We then have a 59 rating here, a confrontation between Rodog and Sean O'Hare. Carlito Cool makes his debut in NWA as he goes over Prince Justice, a former NWA Wildside Champion, with a 47. And then the shocker, nerds and geeks, Das Wonder Kid, Alex Wright, despite being in a brawl earlier with Ernest the Cat Miller, goes over AJ Styles, to become the new NWA Wildside Heavyweight Champion with a 73 rating here. That's kind of shocking that they took the title off AJ that soon. So AJ Styles, already a former NWA Wildside Champion. As, uh, as we look at the championships here, he held the title from October to November. So only a month reign, but defended it seven times. Good for you, AJ. Whereas Abyss almost held it for like an entire fucking year. Either way, October 2001 to November 2001, AJ Styles' best title defense looks like it was against um, it's in these matches. So, looks like it was against Adam Jacobs, the new Georgia Junior Heavyweight Champion, and uh, Alex Wright now becoming the or capturing his first ever World Championship for one. As now he's an NWA World's Wildside Heavyweight Champion, but he's also you know, I believe it said that they had big plans for him as well. So. Part of me is, like, a little worried now. Like, what if I ended up, like, what's the, like, you know, borrowing Alex Wright for a night? Does he lose? It? Well, no, Rob Conway didn't lose the title. And I don't think Nick Dinsmore did it either. So we'll be fine there. And then uh, Adam Jacobs, the new Georgia Junior Heavyweight Champion. That'll be interesting. It's his first reign as the champion, as it is for Alex Wright. And uh, Caprice Coleman's best defense went up against, looks like it's this one. And it was against CM Punk. What a surprise. 
Interesting show for those guys. What is this? Another decision? Great. Oh, a pay raise from Chris Canyon. You know what, Canyon? Yeah. I'm giving you a full raise, my man. I, I got complete faith in Canyon. If I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think Canyon is going to be a future main eventer. I feel it, guys. I feel it in my bones. So, Canyon, you deserve that money. All right. New Japan did their thing. And uh, that's pretty much about it. Nothing else too special going on in the wrestling world today. Did Hulk Hogan have a match? He could have, for all I know. And we are officially on Sunday, so that means it is now time for Survivor Series. So I got, hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment, like, and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, my name has been OMG, WTF, LOL, FTW, BRB. And I will see you guys for the next episode, which, like I said, should be uploaded today. So I'll see you guys for Survivor Series. But until then, have a great day.